So we were going to declare a string object, and then we were going to run some of the string functions through that object. So let's declare a string object here. One of the built-in functions is length, which tells you how many characters the string is made up of. So let me test a few functions here for string. I have a function for uppercase, which is called to uppercase. Similarly, I have a function for lowercase. And these are some of the good choices if you are comparing case sensitive values. You can convert them to a single case before you compare them. That way you can totally avoid running into any possibilities or any number of possibilities that user can enter the input. Similarly, we have another function called match. I'm gonna do this in two steps. In the first one, I will going to look for a text that does exist. So I'm going to call match, and I will going to pass u, which is found. Now let me pass u in all lowercase, just so that you can see the difference between if the match does case sensitive search or case insensitive search. You are right, it is without. It is without, uh, it's a property, sorry, it's a property, not a function. Similarly, you can have a replace function as well to replace a certain string with another string. So, for example, if I have a test string equals to intro to JS. And what I want to do is in the test string, I would like to replace JS with JavaScript. And you can see that after replace takes place, the text changes from intro to JS to intro to JavaScript. Looking for. So if I say that I want to figure out the index of the letter J. So index of. The letter O will be uppercase and index off. And I'll say I'm, I'm looking for a letter J in the string. So it will going to tell me the location where it finds a letter J. It says nine. Okay, so now if I start looking at my actual text here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. J is actually the tenth letter. But since the counting starts from zero, that's why it returns nine, because the index of J is nine. Next, what I want to do is, I want to use another built-in function called substring. Substring allows me to extract portions of the string. So, if I would like to extract the last name from the name Saad Yusuf. 
So there are two ways of doing it. Number one, I can literally say that in the name, I want to extract from location number what? I can manually count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So from 5 onwards, I need everything. And then I can say document dot write last name. And then I can say give me the L name. And that's how I can just simply extract the word Yusuf out of size. But that's if I know manually where exactly that's located. The better approach would be to figure out where that first letter of the last name is. How will you figure that out when names constantly change? Because first name and last name always have a space between them. Now, the better approach could be that I can say I give me the index location in the name. Give me the index of the space. And once I know the index location of the space, just add one, and that should be the start of the last name. And you're going to get exactly the same output. So this is more better approach because we're going to work for any person. Or sorry, index location. Give me up to index location.